Uh, and I'm going to call this meeting to order. Welcome to our December work session meeting. It's so great to see all of our, our, our teachers, our educational support professionals who were here that we're going to recognize shortly. And it's just great to see a, uh, a room full of folks uh, here tonight with us. Uh, with that, I'm going to ask Ms. Anaya to please read the Open Public Meetings Act statement, please. On Thursday, January 14, 2021, notice of this meeting was mailed to the press and the current of Acorba Township. Notice is also delivered that day to the Acorba Township Clerk and posted on the bulletin board in Township Hall. Advertised instructions for this hybrid meeting were posted on our website and on social media on Friday, December 10th, 2021. May we have roll call, please? Ms. Alabarda? Here. Mrs. Bird? Present. Ms. Present. <laughs> Mr. Delabarca? Here. Mr. Ireland? Here. Is attending virtually. Uh, Mr. Price? Here. Mrs. Sullivan is absent. Mrs. Salagi is absent. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Here. And Mr. Castellano? Here. Can we all please stand and salute the flag, please? Okay, so again, welcome everyone to our December work meeting. Um, we're going to now have our superintendent's report. Dr. Grucci is gonna share with us uh, some highlights uh, of things going on in our district. Uh, and then we're going to move to recognize our teachers and our educational support professionals of the year. Um, such a, a wonderful uh, occasion, something that I look forward to each and every year. Um, uh, again, thank you for coming out. We'll also welcome some new employees, uh, which is always great too. And I'm gonna turn the uh, podium over to Dr. Gruccio. Thank you, Mr. Castellano. And yes, a very exciting evening and I can't wait till we get to the recognition part. But before some um, public relations uh, for our school community. So I'll begin with uh, good evening and welcome everyone. Um, a few updates that I have here. Um, first, uh, keeping up with the news, you're aware of the frustrations that schools are experiencing at this time uh, with COVID-19, staff shortages, and social media threats. Um, school districts have mixed reactions to these intricacies and instances, um, and some are flat out closing schools due to safety and security. Um, as for us, We'll begin with COVID-19. We are experiencing an, an increase in cases here in the district. State of New Jersey is in orange status, and right now we have 371 cases among staff and students uh, this year. Um, right now we have 87 staff, 284 students. In the past 14 days, our count is 70 cases for staff and students. So I wanted to provide that update as I do at every meeting. Regarding transportation, we are short with bus drivers. As I explained in our last meeting, we are short about 14 drivers and three substitute drivers. As I shared before, the transportation office staff is driving. They have their CDLs, and we have current bus drivers doing double loops, double runs. So an example would be if they have a run that's close to, say, the high school, they'll come, they'll drop off students, and they'll turn and go right on out and do another run to get those students to the, to back to the high school. So trust me, we are committed to providing transportation and to getting our students to and from school safely. However, as well as others, we are experiencing difficulty with staffing in our transportation department. 
We need you to help in two ways. One, please understand our situation that we are in now and know that we are doing our very, very best and have not had to close schools or put transportation on our parents at this time. Kudos to our Director of Transportation, Michelle Fisher, and her staff who has done magic which, with tears in getting coverage for runs. This is where we appreciate the efforts of our drivers, our staff, and our director. Let's view these efforts as positiveness in a very frustrating situation. Let's work together, and I'll move to number two. Send us anyone who's interested in driving a bus because we need bus drivers. Social media, as you have heard, schools are dealing with inappropriate behaviors, some perceived as threats. This is serious. Currently, we have been addressing reported cases of concerning statements and graffiti. I want everyone to know that much prompt investigations and research go on and they're being put into each and every case to find the facts behind these cases. And that's in order to communicate the truth to parents, staff, and students to ensure the safety for all. Our district is in constant communication with the Egg Harbor Township Police Department as we partner in protecting the health, safety, and welfare of our students and staff here in our school district. The presence of the police department indicates their support and concern as we are aware that copycat behaviors can follow inappropriate behaviors. I know that there was some concern about the presence of the police department at the high school last week, but please know that we would not let our students in any one of our buildings if a threat was real. I sit here and I continue to stress to students and to our, and to our staff the very important motto, see something, hear something, say something, and we will assist and we will investigate. But that, insist, that assists us with providing the safety and security throughout our school district. I'm not sure if I have to communicate this part again, but I will, and I will explain that the latest social media about HHF's shooting on 12-11-21 was found to be related to Heights Town High School in East Windsor, New Jersey. School officials there have assured us that they investigated the situation, and at any time, at no time, was this situation or this threat related to the Egg Harbor Township High School. However, to ensure the safety for all, an investigation was prompted via physical exam examination of our school building and interviews were conducted. We communicated with parents about the situation as soon as we were informed about the facts. Again, I stress about the facts. We recognize that this is a tough time of the year. Not everyone enjoys the holidays as it brings angst and anxiety to some. And I ask you to please take the time to have conversations with your children, with your students, and inquire and talk about any anxieties, excitement, uncertainties, or fears that they may have. Our school district has many, many available resources to assist with social and emotional needs. Please communicate any concerns with your building principal. With all that said, I ask that you are aware. I know that you are aware of what's happening with schools in the country, around the country, and social media. Please talk to your children to share the danger of engaging in such activity on social media. Again, I will stress that facts are important and that what you will hear from me and this administration are the facts. I caution you that banter and sharing misinformation on Facebook is just as detrimental as the initial, initial inappropriate perceived information. I will end with what I find myself saying. We have great kids, we have a great staff, and we have an extraordinary school community. Let's continue to work together for our students to provide them with an education in a safe environment. Embrace the current reality. Engage in being positive and proactive and educate others on the facts that you receive. All right, I'm done. So <laughs> let's continue with positive. Let's focus on our guests this evening. And Dr. Charlton, join me in tonight in celebrating as we recognize the 2021 Teacher of the Year in Educational Services Professional of the Year. Educators who have gone above and beyond their service to their students and selected by their peers. Over the last several months, educators have changed. Education has changed and educators had to change their way to deliver instruction to New Jersey's 1.4 million students. So now more than ever, more than ever before, is the time to celebrate their efforts.
Good evening, and thank you, Dr. Guccio. Uh, to our honorees, first we want to say thank you for your patience. As we all know, the pandemic has pushed back a lot of celebrations all over the world, and certainly this is one of them. You know that you were identified last year, and then you took your offices this September, and you've really been honoring your positions with pride all through the first four months of this year. You may know that there were Teachers of the Year and ESPs of the Year announced by the building principals last Friday, December 10th. They start serving next year in September of 2023, because it's a state process that follows through with County Teacher of the Year and State Teacher of the Year. So we don't even know the resolutions to all those processes until April or May. So we will have another recognition from the board later this spring for those people that were just recognized then. Okay, so just a few recognitions before we get started. The beautiful decorations you see all around the boardroom tonight, okay, they are from the Renaissance Program at Alder, represented by Leanne Dragovitz, my assistant. Thank you. My assistant, Victoria Bordenaro, as well. Wonderful custodial staff we have at Alder School. Did a lot of work in here this morning as well. And last but not least, Tyler Gardner over here, our cameraman, our TV station manager, who produced the video you're about to see. Egg Harbor Township School District wishes to congratulate our educators and education service professionals of the year. Swift. Teacher of the Year, Ms. Jennifer Simpson. <laughs> Education Service Professional of the Year, Ms. Jill Haynes. <laughs> Slayball. Teacher of the Year, Ms. Marielle Webster. <laughs> Education Service Professional of the Year, Ms. Elizabeth Derbyshire. <laughs> Davenport. Teacher of the Year, Ms. Stephanie Vandenberg. <laughs> Education Service Professional of the Year, Ms. Michelle Field McFarland. Miller. Teacher of the Year, Ms. Stacy Imps. Education Service Professional of the Year, Ms. Jillian Sen. Fernwood. Teacher of the Year, Ms. Elizabeth Spengler. Education Service Professional of the Year, Ms. Alicia Hoopar. Alder. Teacher of the Year, Ms. Marissa Lara. <laughs> Education Service Professional of the Year, Ms. Jennifer Nelson. <laughs> Egg Harbor Township High School. Teacher of the Year, Mr. James House. <laughs> Education Service Professional of the Year, Mr. Q Lee. Congratulations to all recipients. All right, thank you, Tyler. And one last introduction before we get started. Mighty has joined us tonight on a very special evening. Mighty, you're welcome to come up here while we're handing out our awards. Thank you. And so how this is going to work is I'm going to call up the principal, okay? And the principal is going to introduce our teacher of the year and educational service professional of the year and say a few words. And while she or he is doing that, we are also going to be giving out a, these beautiful plaques from the Board of Education. A beautiful bouquet of flowers from our Eagle Enterprises, our flower shop over at the high school, from Ms. Buttress, the teacher that runs that program. And then also recognitions from the local, county, and state levels as well. Okay, so we're going to start off with the interim principal from Swift School from last year, and that's Ms. Joetta Serres. <laughs> Every year I have a different title. <laughs> All right, I would like to we call our teacher of the year up, Ms. Jen Simpson. Okay, while she's making her way down, Jen is a second grade teacher, now at Slaybaugh School, but she was a Swift at heart. She um, is the ultimate teacher. She has the heart of gold, makes everyone smile. She's a team player and has earned the respect of her peers, her parents, and her students. She has the ultimate gift of being very firm but fair. She does everything with a smile, no matter what. She has taught her children to love reading, to love math, to love science. And again, do your best no matter how hard or you know it may seem, do your best. She has always offered to take the ELL cluster and this is a 
not an easy feat. She has taught her children to embrace, whoops, and love cultures of all kinds. And she wants them, above all, to be kind to each other. And they always uh, celebrate every accomplishment, no matter how small. So she's a great leader and teacher. My educational services professional is Mrs. Jill Haynes, who could not be with us this evening. Jill has been in the district as a paraprofessional for approximately 18 years. And during that time, she has served students in all grades, in multiply disabled classrooms, and in class support, in um, pull out resource. She has done it all. She never ever hesitates with a helping hand, whether it's to open a car door for a child, to go to lunch duty, to take a child who's, you know, having a hard time and crying. She has been known to bicycle lunches and pre-COVID give little pieces of candy. Uh, she also has been known to buy birthday presents and even Christmas pajamas. So she is one who really truly believes in her heart that all children can learn. They just need a chance and love. Thank you, Ms. Cerise. Uh, the interim principal at the Slate Ball School, Ms. Kaplan Sang. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to start with our educational services professional, who is Ms. Liz Derbyshire. She's unable to make it here tonight, but we still have some words to say about her. Uh, so Liz is our school nurse. Uh, she's been a nurse during a pandemic. I feel like I don't need to say anything else about why she won this, um, but I will. At the beginning of last year, there were so many unknowns. Um, Liz took on the job with confidence, with bravery. Uh, she. You know, she's empathetic. She was constantly researching COVID, how to, to keep up with the changes that were happening. Uh, Liz works with our youngest learner. She works as a nurse for the preschool program. Uh, so she cares for the babies, if you will, uh, whether it's a scraped knee, a stomach ache, or just a kid having a bad day. Um, she shows up and she does a great job. Her coworkers describe her as a good listener, very skilled, a hard worker, and most importantly, loved and appreciated. Congratulations to Liz. We're lucky to have her. All right, now for our teacher of the year, who is here? Are you sure it's you, Marielle? Don't get up yet. Miss <laughs> Marielle Webster. Marielle Webster. Marielle is a first grade teacher at our complex. It was shared with me that Marielle is a firm believer in the Allen Beck saying, you can't do the Bloom stuff until you take care of the Maslow stuff. Anyone who meets Marielle and sees her with her students knows that this is true. Marielle is always calm, always smiling, and always positive. Marielle makes a true effort and succeeds at building meaningful relationships with each of her students. Marielle is a real team player, and she is always there to help her fellow first grade teachers. During virtual learning, Marielle learned as much as she could about teaching online and would often turn key these new skills to her colleagues. Marielle even spent much of her summer attending the virtual literacy conference and webinars on technology. Sounds like a fun summer. <laughs> Marielle could also be found helping parents, often setting up private, private Google Meets with families to walk them through Google Classroom. Teachers and students alike are better for having known Marielle or Ms. Webster, and we are so grateful to have her on our team. Keep on smiling because it helps us all. Thank you. The principal of our Davenport Complex, Ms. Latia White. Where will we be without technology? So I will be using my phone. <laughs> All right, so first and foremost, I do want to just say I'm elated to honor two of Davenport's finest teachers. And we have quite a few of them in the back, uh, but we will be um, recognizing two of the finest that were 
nominated for Teacher of the Year and ESPY of the Year. So Stephanie Vandenberg, she is the Teacher of the Year for 2021-2022. She's the second and third grade pullout resource teacher and she is amazing. Not only that, but she's a mom of some very beautiful children that you see up front. <laughs> Stephanie has been in education for many years. She's a great asset to the Davenport family. She provides support to teachers, students, and families to ensure that the best educational practices and supports are in place. In the community, Stephanie participates in many different races and marathons. I'm not sure if you saw the news, but she actually did a marathon around uh, our area, which was awesome. As an advocate for different causes to better herself and to set an example for her students and her children. She is a stellar example of a top-notch educator and an excellent role model in the school community, which m for many reasons is why she was selected as our Teacher of the Year. Stephanie, thank you for embracing, engaging, and educating the students of Davenport School and for helping support your fellow teachers, which you do very often. The title of Teacher of the Year is well-deserved. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so our Educational Service Professional of the Year is Michelle Fowell McFarlane. <laughs> One thing before I read my speech, Michelle works day and night, literally. I just got off a meeting with her not too long ago. She texts the parents, she makes sure the students are taken care of. She's been doing amazing since COVID and after COVID. Um, so thank you so much for that. Michelle is an LDTC and she has been in the district for many years. Uh, she actually transferred from Miller and she's over at Davenport with us and we're happy to have her. She works with our students who are most in need, providing services, revising and implementing individualized educational plans, those are IEPs, and, remaining in co and remains in constant communication with families to ensure that the whole child is being taken care of socially, emotionally, mentally, and academically. It was noted that she remains cool and calm in every situation she's faced with and is always willing to answer questions when approached, no matter how busy. And she's very busy. She's a team player and has always displayed respect for her peers and the students she encounters on a daily basis. She's there to offer assistance and to calm challenging situations. Michelle, thank you for embracing and engaging and educating the students of Davenport School. As one of your colleagues stated, the humor you bring almost to almost any situation and your ability to handle each challenge with such, positive, with such a positive attitude and grace, you are deserving of the Educational Services Professional title. The principal of the Julianne D. Miller Elementary School, Mr. Jim Battersby. First of all, congratulations to everyone, everyone being honored tonight. Uh, obviously, it's greatly deserved. Thank you also to the Board of Education for uh, recognizing our staff members who work so hard during the school year. <laughs> it's with great pleasure that I introduce you Ms. Stacy Imms, Miller School's 2021-22 Teacher of the Year. Ms. Imms is an ELA teacher and special ed teacher at the Miller School and has been in our district for over 20 years. In my brief time at Miller, I've grown to know Ms. Imms as a professional teacher who truly loves teaching and building relationships with her students. She is always willing to assist anyone in need and she is easy to approach. I've gained much respect for Ms. Imms to the point that I had asked her to mentor a new staff member because I know how much she, how much she approaches uh, her teaching, how she approaches her students, and her classroom culture. Ms. Ames is also a member of the ELA Curriculum Committee and has served as a member of our school leadership team. Ms. Ames was nominated by several of her colleagues and they have stated the following. Education is not a job for Ms. Ames, it's a true calling. Each student in her class enters with enthusiasm and is eager to learn. Stacy is a humble and kind individual who will make sure that others are taken care of. When we are not restricted by COVID, she takes time to do lunch with the teacher. 
where she learns about her students' lives outside of school. Stacy puts her heart into her teaching. It is evident through her lessons and the relationships she has with her students. She makes lessons engaging and fun, and her students are always happy to be in her classroom. Stacy gives back to our EHT community as she is involved with the LPGA Girls Golf Club. She is an involved parent and works closely with her son's schools, as well as helps to raise money for the Funny Farm. Miller's Teacher of the Year, Stacy Ems. It is also with great pleasure to introduce to you Ms. Jillian Sen, Miller School's 21-22 Educational Service Professional of the Year. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sen is our Behavioral specialist, specialist at the Miller School and has been in our district for six years. I have observed Jillian and her work with the students and staff in our school and it is truly, she is truly remarkable. Her job is very challenging, and no matter how difficult the situation, she always presents herself professionally. Additionally, we view her as someone who loves kids, is creative in assisting students, and is collaborative with, collaborative with staff and parents. Ms. Sen was also nominated by several staff members, and they have this to say about her. Gillian takes the time to connect on a personal and professional level with each one of her students so she can understand how to help them overcome their unique challenges. Jillian is always on call when teachers or paraprofessionals need additional support. She takes the lead in educating teachers and paras about different topics, and she meets with them regularly. She is always learning and improving by continu continuing her education. Through successful intervention strategies, Jillian has gained parent trust, and he looked to her for guidance on how to carry over behavioral techniques into the home. It's Jillian Sen. The principal of Fernwood Middle School, Mr. Kevin Frick. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I want to congratulate all the nominated winners and also thank the Board of Education and Central Administration for having this event tonight. I first want to introduce our Teacher of the Year, Ms. Elizabeth Spengler. In looking back at the nomination, some of the words that stuck out about Elizabeth were vibrant, passionate, energetic. I couldn't agree more. Elizabeth is a sixth grade ELA teacher. She's not been in the, in the field that long, but she's a leader amongst her pod, her department, and the building. She's served as a Renaissance advisor in the past, and one of the things that I observe daily with Elizabeth is two things. One, she's one of the first people in and one of the last people out every day, which is telling of the hard work ethic that she has. And two, I'm constantly seeing her in the halls talking to past students and present students, making connections every single day, and really proving that it's not just the ones in your classroom currently, it's all the students that we're there for every single day. She exudes that on a daily basis. I'm honored to work with her every single day. Congratulations. And our Educational Services Professional of the Year, Mrs. Alicia Papard. I promised Alicia today I'd be quick because she does not like you made a fuss over. I promised her. <laughs> Alicia is one of our middle school guidance counselors. As you can tell in this climate we have right now, what a difficult job that probably is. But she does it with such a passion every single day. Some of the words that were used, caring, um, understanding, supportive. Alicia is a leader within our department. Uh, she's always looking for support services for all of our students and all of their needs on a daily basis. Uh, some of the things Alicia's working on right now is a holiday gift drive and donations for needy students for food or gifts to make sure that some of our um, students in need have a wonderful holiday season. She's caring, she's loving, she's exactly what you want in a middle school counselor. I'm proud to work with you every day. Thank you so much.
Principal of Alder Avenue Middle School, Ms. Mary Ann Giardina. Good evening, everyone. Tonight at Alder, we are honoring two very special and two really unique people. With this celebration, there is a hope, a desire for both of you, Jennifer and Marisa, that you are present here and now. Your family is with you. Your work family is with you at Alder, and the larger EHD community is here to celebrate you. It is a special night. The first person that I would like to recognize is Alder's Educational Services Professional of the Year, higher professional Jennifer Nelson. When you consider the many qualities needed to be a paraprofessional, Jennifer Nelson possesses the best of them. Her colleagues share that she is professional, knowledgeable, spontaneous, and strong in technological skills. I can share with you that she has proven year after year to be a team player, a person who is there for both students and teachers alike. She is an exemplary way of bringing out the best in her students because she meets them where they are. This is truly a gift of special educators. Most importantly, she accomplishes this with an energy, a love, and a charisma that is second to none. Tonight, we honor her by letting her know, we see you, Jennifer. Each day, we see what you do. Whether staff, students, or parents, we have experienced how you make us feel, and we like it. In fact, it's contagious, the good kind, folks. <laughs> and we should share with you that anyone who passes Jennifer in the hall knows that they will be greeted with a sunny smile, like you see now. You'll see that sparkle in her eyes. Her warmth, kindness, and friendliness will shine through the halls of Alder, and we know this is especially important in COVID times. Being nominated by your peers tells a lot. It's one of the greatest compliments that you can offer someone to be highly valued by those with whom you work every day, your colleagues. You have this. Being in your presence is a joy that extends to every person at Alder Daily. I know that anyone who has the pleasure of being in your company, whether colleagues, family, or friends, all count themselves fortunate. I, have, I am most pleased to have the bragging rights to say that we have Alder's paraprofessional as our Educational Services Professional of the Year. Jennifer Nelson, congratulations. The next person that I wish to recognize is Alder's Teacher of the Year, Marie Solaire. When considering the facets of Marie Solaire that are exceptional as a teacher, they are also the very facets that make her exceptional as a person. It is her constant drive to challenge her students and herself in the learning process. Marisa, you absolutely know and show that teaching is hard work every day. You are the consummate model for showing students that learning is not easy, and the goal of learning is to keep climbing, keep striving, keep pushing yourself higher. Marisa, thank you for knowing the value of setting the bar high. Thank you for embracing your students and capturing their written and verbal endeavors with real feedback. That is powerful. When you know people and care about them, it's easier to offer very candid feedback to improve and guide them towards fixing mistakes. You accomplish this daily. Sharing with all here each day, Mrs. Lair gives her lunch to work with smaller groups of students. She gets to know them. She uses their interests to help them memorialize the things they love through speaking and writing. This allows them to feel the confidence to take a risk in their writing and in their speaking. She models that behavior by sharing of herself. Students share their challenges or something they may not have because they feel safe. She uses podcasts, visual art, film, fiction, nonfiction, and traditional methods to instill learning. Her co colleague and mentee last year, Mr. Abel, shared that during hybrid instruction, Marisa shared her own personal collection of books and delivered them personally and by hand, yes, sanitized, to each student. Walk into her room and you feel it come alive. 
There's an energy and vibrance in this place of work, her classroom. Students know that the expectation is high and there is little downtime. Moments to learn are precious. I know that she hustled home quite quickly tonight to get her family so that they could be with her here tonight. Like her students, when she speaks of her family, she exudes love and she celebrates their individuality and accomplishments. This is the gift of Mrs. Lair. She wants each person with whom she interacts to know their value. She wants to make them feel unique. She wants them to embrace and share their talents. Simply look at her students' work products, listen to their writing when they share it, follow her mantra, read and read more. Mrs. Lair is solid proof. Teaching is tiring, but totally worth it. I am so pleased to have known Marisa for many years and to share this celebration with her, her family, and everyone here. I am equally pleased to congratulate her, share with you how special she is to Alder, and present her as Alder's Teacher of the Year. Congratulations, Marisa. The principal of Egg Harbor Township High School, Ms. Patty Connor. Good evening, everyone. I'd also like to congratulate uh, all of the recipients, some of you I've seen and I know from schools that I've been in throughout the district, and I'm very proud of all of you. It's just wonderful to see all of the faces here, the people that are here to support you. I am going to recognize our uh, Educational Professional Services Person of the Year first. He could not make it tonight, but it would be remiss if I didn't mention him and some of the great things that he has done for our school district. His name is Q Lee. And while many of you may not know who he is, he, has, uh, he received in 2003 his certified ATC, which means he's a certified athletic trainer. So we were pleased to grab a hold of him back in 2006 and bring him to the high school. He has served us in so many capacities at the high school that I, too numerous to count. Coaches depend on him, students adore him, and this past year, I just have to tell you a real quick story about last year. We were in COVID, as you know, and athletics didn't know what was going to be coming down the line. So we didn't know if parents would be allowed to attend events. We didn't know what was going to happen. And Q set everything up from soup to nuts. I'm telling you, what he had to do with every athletic team, with every team that visited us, with every team as they left our building to go away games, he needed um, slips that say that they were medically cleared. He needed uh, temperature checks every single day and never complained, did it with a smile. And again, we got through it and he was so well deserving of what I really wish he was here, but he wasn't feeling good today. And he thought, I better stay home. I'm not getting anyone sick. So thank you uh, to him if he's watching. We really appreciate it. Our teacher of the year for the high school for this past year I cannot say enough about. I'm going to ask Jimmy to come up. I'm sorry, but <laughs> this young man is Mr. Jim House. And <laughs> I knew I was going to slip, and I knew I was going to say Jimmy, because this goes back to 1998. Yep. And Jim was a student, as his wife was, at the Egg Harbor Township High School. And I was, had the pleasure of having them in my class. Jim has come back to the school in and he's been with us for 19 years at the high school teaching biology, core science, environmental education to our students. And it is so exciting to see somebody who went through the district come back and give back not only to the high school, but to the community. And so I'm so pleased to stand here. Now I could be here for another hour because when you see the things or you hear the things that he has done, it just blows your mind. So I'm going to be short. I'm going to hit highlights because I know everybody needs to get on with their life tonight. But uh, he is just amazing with what he does with our students. When you talk about our, our educa educate and engage and embrace, constant with our students. They love his classes. He uh, also supervises our, our auditorium. He's our AV coordinator. He was instrumental in getting, uh, getting the high school its green ribbon status through the state of New Jersey. 
Uh, he was very, very involved with the Sustainable New Jersey and got the certificates throughout the district and for the high school, so we're very, very involved in Sustainable New Jersey. Um, I'm almost done, guys. Uh, Governor's Award, he was recognized in 2007, 17, I'm sorry, for the educational, uh, Environmental Educational Award from the Governor. Also in 2017, now this is very exciting, in 2017, he was, um, went up to uh, the stadium, Link, and uh, he was the Alex, Alex, Exalta, Philadelphia Eagles All-Pro Teacher of the Year. How about that, right? So he was one of them. Uh, we continue to go in um, January. He will be featured in the NJEA Review for his outdoor classroom. And a little birdie told me it's very possible he's going to be on the front cover of that particular edition. What great stuff we have here in EHT. He's advisor to our environmental club at the EHT High School. He is also on the green team. He is the stage crew advisor for both the high school and the middle schools. And since 2016, I wish I had a drum roll here. Okay, since 2016, he has been awarded over $20,000 in grants for our high school. Now, if that's not Teacher of the Year, I don't know what is. One last thing that I have to say about Jim, and I will end it for the evening with the Teacher of the Year. Not only is he Egg Harbor Township High School Teacher of the Year, he is also Atlantic County Teacher of the Year. All here from Egg Harbor Township. Jim, we love you. How about one more big hand for all of our honorees tonight? And thank you, principals. Great job. What we're going to do right now is we're going to ask the teachers of the year to come up right up here where Mighty is, and we're going to take a group picture. We're going to take a district picture. And friends, family, if you want to get closer to jump in on the picture, please feel free. But teachers of the year, please come on up. By the way, for all the little ones, if you want a picture with Mighty, after we're done pictures up here, Mighty's going to go to the back of the room if you want a picture. Middle school. Middle school. Long time. Long time. Is everybody up here? Month of your month. All right. One, two, three. All right. Thank you, teachers of the year. All right, let's get our Educational Services Professionals of the Year up. We'll take a district photo. Again, family and friends, feel free to come to the front to get a cleaner shot. Thanks, Tamika. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Is that all? Yeah, there's more. Yeah. Okay. All right. One. Pick up. Three. Just flowers. Should we smile because we have missed? I know. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Congratulations, ESPs of the year. Thank you again, family, friends, community members, for helping us honor these wonderful people. Again, little guys, little girls, hey, Mighty's going to be in the back if you want to take a picture. Thank you, Mighty. We appreciate you coming out. Good job. And thank you, everyone. We appreciate it.
Okay, we'll take just a few minutes for everyone to take pictures and socialize. And uh, those of you who are here for the awards, uh, please don't uh, feel as if you have to stay for our uh, business meeting. You're certainly welcome to, but we understand you have things to do. are good? Yes. Excellent. Tell them I said hello.
Yep. All right, you guys get out of here. Congratulations, everyone, once again. Okay, so we're going to proceed with our business, um, and the next thing we have is finance and operations. So I'm going to ask for our uh, finance and operations committee report, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm going to get the report. Um, the Finance and Operations Committee met Tuesday, December 7 to 6 p.m. at the um, Slave Ball Board Office Executive Room, and uh, we discussed um, various topics. The, the number one that we discussed was transportation, and I know we covered a lot of that tonight when we spoke about transportation. Um, recommendation for additional compensation from administration for December meeting to be effective in January 2022. Um, we discussed spring surveys. Let me just find my place here on the computer. Um, okay, spring surveys to opt out of busing. Um, that was under transportation. And update run, we went over the data, updated runs. Uh, facilities, we spoke about some of the project, the high school fields. Um, let me try to get a better spot. Completion of the spring, completion, completion in the spring of 2022 and the use of the fall of 2022. So that's, that's the, uh, the, the goal that we're um, looking for with the high school fields. Like proposal to come from the township as possible partnership for evening use by the recreation teams. Uh, Slave Ball parking lot, final phase is striping the back of Slave Ball Elementary and implement new pickup procedures to streamline the traffic patterns. Phase two and phase three will be reviewed after the new year. HVAC, bid to go out this summer for work in 2022, looks less than likely based on demands for units from the ESSER nationwide funding, high school roofing, bid opening, one in 10, and award at January meeting. Uh, municipal drug weapon-free signs. They are in Public Works, the Ed Township Public Works building, and will be installed soon. I know we talked about that for a while, so it's nice to see them get uh, moving on those. Uh, use of facilities fees. There was talk about the travel basketball and wrestling partner with the rec for insurance and other areas, and request to be considered in the same tier as Township Rec. Another request was made to waive building use fees and pay only custodians and incurred fees when the buildings are closed. This committee is recommending changing the policy to reflect these changes. Uh, the comprehensive maintenance plan was discussed and the plan uh, with the committee and Mr. Ireland shared concerns about using the same information for the current active year and the plan budget ahead. We explained that it's too soon to have, a, to have solid numbers for the budget in the plan column so that we use the current budget knowing it will cost at least that much to continue to main the facilities. So that, that kind of clarified that. So we had a better understanding how that works. Leadership role nomination, Ms. Anaya was nominated to the second vice president of the New Jersey business officials with the state of New Jersey professional organization for the New Jersey School Business Administrators. I know that was quite a mouthful, but I think I got it out right. So we want to congratulate our business administration on that. Um, grant uh, amendments and information, the um, there was the, the IDEA, excuse me, the IDEA carryover using funds towards additional summer work and um, the ESEI using to amend the budget to cover additional professional development needs. ESSER 2 update in January, we will be adjusting the 4 million ESSER budget to realign with additional COVID related expenses funded by some summer savings from programs planned that come in under budget. Preschool expansion, we are reviewing internal process and partnerships for the 2020, for the 2022, 2023 school year. And we'll hear more during the budget process. Um, action items for tonight, gifts, grants, donations. Uh, for next week. I'm sorry, correction, for next week. Gifts, grants, donations, uh, gaming equipment, grant applications, New Jersey clean, FEMA, Chrome cards from another district, et cetera. 
Uh, we also went over the, the 4621 policy expenses, the link, and, and took a look at that. And uh, I think that was pretty much it, Sandra, unless you, if you wanted to add anything, that would conclude my report. Nope, that's great, thank you. I just wanted to add that we did edit the high school fields this afternoon to include the completion delay. Um, so basically the project is about done at this time where we're getting the sod. They are not um, going to guarantee their work if they cut the sod now to plant on our, ter on our fields for it to set properly. So to err on the um, you know, safety side or a cautious side, I guess, to save everybody is going to be to go ahead and cut and plant it in the spring to then rest for full use. So that was the only change from the report from Friday. But that was a great job. Any questions? Oh, I would want to highlight, because we are going to look to take action with the policy committee, um, maybe possibly next meeting. The use of facilities, I want to make sure you guys understood what um, Mr. Price was saying. We did discuss with the township, um, Dr. Gertrude and I met with the township, and in the past there's been conversation about travel basketball and travel wrestling. And um, what the, we found, we learned at this meeting was, they are all EHT students. When you think of travel, we thought it would be more regional, and they said if there's not an Egg Harbor Township student, they have to speak to the Recreation Board and ask permission for that student to participate. And it can't be in order to save the team, the, st the team has to be stable before that additional player um, is, is on the team. Um, so it's not gonna make or break a team by bringing an outsider in. So considering that it is an Egg Harbor Township team, considering that we are no longer doing pay to play for high school students, and the fact that recreation is using um, our space at a discount, they asked for that to be extended to travel, which we've always treated as an outside nonprofit agency. Um, listening to them, um, Dr. Gruch and I are making the recommendation to treat them as the rec um, because it is 100% our students. What they do is they apply for travel, the, um, I'll talk the cream of the crop, you know, those, those students that get to play at the higher level, but it is all regional, then the rest go down to rec. So it's not like it's one or the other. They kind of work with the rec so closely. We felt like it was a very blurred line, especially with rec providing their certificates of insurance. Rec does their scheduling. We bill rec, rec then bills them. So it's just become a clean, um, if we just, you know, approve to change a policy to treat them as township rec since it is our own youth um, playing these sports. Um, the second part of that was um, buildings being open. In the past, we used to charge a building usage fee, which covered the you know utilities. We had calculated years ago um, the amount of um, energy used for a certain per hour rate. When we were charging use of facilities and doing pay to play for students, they did ask the board to consider to, uh, we were doing a $10,000 allowance that pretty much covered rec, but it isn't gonna cover travel um, basketball and wrestling was the example given. Um, wrestling's budget is $4,500. The usage from the building fees was $4,100, just to use our space. So they asked if we could, um, they requested the board consider um, treating it as if the buildings were open, charges for if we have to have another custodian or security or anything that's like above and beyond the district's cost. But if the custodians are already in the building and the buildings are already open, to allow them to come in and use our facilities um, and waive those fees so that they can have these sports. Um, in essence, if we say no, the rates are higher for parents to register just to cover the fees of our use of our buildings. So they are our students. They ask to kind of partner with us that way where we would um, waive those fees. Um, budget hat, we budget $20,000 a year for facility rentals. Uh, we do hit that number with outside use, be it um, play more sports or graduations for our non-public schools, um, people who have plays in our auditorium. So it's not on the budget side, anything that would impact negatively. It's, it's, a, it's additional revenue. It was always above and beyond, um, but trying to work with the township. That was a recommendation that Dr. and I spoke. We looked at it and thought we should bring it to committee. Committee agreed to bring it to full board as a recommendation to go ahead and waive those um, building usage fees. They would pay for anything about the cost that they incur though. So if they have a game on a Sunday and it costs our custodians double, t double time, they would actually be paying those fees. So if you are all in agreement, we will bring that to um, action for the next meeting, if that's okay. Sounds good. Any other questions on that? I want to highlight that because it was a little more detailed. Um, that, would, that would go to policy, correct? Uh, correct. Gotcha. But I want to make sure, I look, if everybody kind of supports it, we can just break the recommendation of the language, go through policy to push on to the next agenda if possible. So, okay. Um, I think it's pretty, that was pretty much the heaviest part of our meeting. <laughs> so. yeah. 
Any other questions? Any uh, other questions or comments? Well, there's on no action tonight for finance and operations. Anyone? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to move to curriculum and I'll ask for the curriculum committee report, please. Good evening. The curriculum committee met on December 7th, 2021, from 5 to 6 p.m. via Google Meet. In attendance was Mr. Della Barca, Mrs. Bird, Ms. Moss, and Ms. Alabarda, myself. Action items discussed were field trips and professional development. Also discussed was the proposal for a new supervisor position to oversee the implementation of science-based practices around literacy in Tier 1 for foundational learning and aligning practices throughout the grade levels and tiers. Discussion around this position and the future of implementation of the new learning and resources that support the science of reading occurred. There was also additional discussion around uh, dual language programs and more research and options will be explored and shared with the committee. Do you have anything else to add? Any questions or comments on curriculum? Okay, seeing none, uh, we're going to move into personnel and I'm gonna ask Dr. Charlton if he has any comments for uh, open session. I do not, just that we are taking action tonight, thank you. Okay, yes, we are taking action uh, this evening on 7.2 through 7.10 and the reason we are going to take action on personnel and policy tonight is because we have a number of people uh, and things that we need to get in place uh, for January. So uh, with that, if I can uh, have a motion on 7.2 through 7.10, please. Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Ms. Alabardo. The mic broken? Yes. The mic? That was a yes? Yes. Thank you. Mrs. Bird? Mr. Price, if you turn your microphone off. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Tommy, yes. That's okay. Like fine, <laughs> Mr. Delabarca? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. That was a yes from virtual Mr. Price? Yes. There you go. Mr. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Castellano? Yes. Okay, moving into policy. If I could ask for our policy committee report, please. Thank you. On Tuesday, December 7th, men members of the policy committee met in person to discuss policy agenda items. Present at the meeting were Mr. Castellano, Mr. Ireland, um, Mr. Santilli, Cassie Gifford, uh, Esquire, and Barbara Scalaghi, or Ms. Scalaghi also attended for part of the meeting and myself. The following policies and discussions occurred. Uh, new business consisted of mandated Strauss ESME updates with the following policies and Board of Education approved regulations requiring approval as follows. Policy 2422, comprehensive health and physical education was a mandated revision to include 16 new statutes and mandatory New Jersey student learning standards. In addition, policy 2200, curriculum content was added to the committee's discussion and up for a revision as the committee recommends that four of the mandatory NJSLS are moved to policy 2200 from policy 2422. As, as those new statutes did not seem to apply to health and physical ed. So basically out of the six new mandates, we moved uh, four to a different, to policy 20 from, excuse me, moved to policy 2200 from policy 2422. Um, as a result, uh, we can abolish policy 2425 uh, because it's now covered within 2422. So we streamline things a bit. Policy 2421, career and technical education has been revised to reflect the recent mandatory updates to the career and technical education programs and standards. Policy 4250, hours and days of work support staff members has been revised to reflect the employment categories of confidential support staff personnel. Policy 
federal awards, funds, internal controls, allowable costs, policy 6115.02, federal awards, funds, internal controls, mandatory disclosures and policy 6115.03, federal awards, funds, internal controls, conflict of interest are all new policies and require two readings. All three policies are mandatory as they adhere to the uniform administrative requirements, cost principles, and the audit requirements for federal awards. In addition, policy 6311, contracts for goods and services funded by federal grants is recommended to be revised with one reading to adhere to the same mandatory requirements. Policy 2430, co-curricular activities, policy 2431, athletic competition, and policy 9270, homeschooling and equivalent education are being recommended for revisions with one reading to allow homeschool students in grades seven and eight to participate in athletics and co-curricular activities in accordance with the policies. This is requiring action this evening, 8.2 to 8.13 on the agenda. Um, and additionally, the committee at the request of commu committee members discussed policy 5511 dress code and grooming for students. Administration provided an update on various committees at the secondary level, and I believe uh, we were also provided an update from our middle school level as well. Um, discussing the policy as they seek input from stakeholders and students, and inclusive students, in regards to the dress and grooming policy. In addition, there was one recommendation for a change in language within the policy from a committee member that will be considered and reviewed again when the policy is brought back to the policy committee with more recommended updates. So that is a work in progress. And I look forward to hearing more next month. That concludes my policy update. Is there anything, Mr. Santilli, you'd like to add? Okay. Any questions or comments, board members? Seeing none, can I have a Motion for 8.2 through 8.13, please. Motion. I'll second that. Ooh. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Alabarda? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. That was a yes virtually. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. And Mr. Castellano. Yes. And now, it gives me great pleasure to ask Dr. Gruccio to introduce and welcome our new hires. Okay. It is my great pleasure as well, to, when we get this part, to uh, congratulate our new hires on the most recent approval. Hot off the press, I welcome to the A. Carver Township School District the following, Mr. Patrick Scanapico, Paraprofessional Eagle Academy. Please stand. And welcome. Okay. Kiara Nieves, Paraprofessional Swift Sleigh Ball Complex. Alan Kinsey, Paraprofessional Davenport. <laughs> welcome back. Morgan Gettings, Paraprofessional Davenport. <laughs> Giacomo Parisi, Unarmed Guard Alder. Gerald Bryant, Business Teacher High School. <laughs> Daniela Puerta Acosta, Speech Therapist with Sleigh Ball Complex. <laughs> Jessica Stragiakis, Speech Therapist, Davenport. <laughs> and Linda Santiago, 12 month Supervisor of Language Art Literacy. <laughs> Again, congratulations and welcome. And I know it's been a long night of observing all the great things here at Acre Township School District. Um, you are free to uh, pursue your home now. <laughs> yes, well, welcome, welcome, all of you. Welcome aboard. Okay, at this time, um, we are going to move forward to communications. Um, new board calendar has one meeting on it, uh, so that's pretty easy. Um, next, uh, we're going to uh, recognize the um, 
2020-2021 GIF awards that were received. Would you like to, uh, uh, Miss and I, would you like to just uh, run through those real quick so we can recognize you and your staff for uh, the great work that you did? We're going to recognize the district administration and staff for processing um, things happen you know we want to make sure we understand things happen but that we handle it with a proper process and follow our protocols set in place so egg harbor township was recognized with a certificate of excellence in outstanding performance and claims management for maintaining a loss ratio between 50 and 90 percent for the 2021 school year we also got a certificate of excellence for average days to report a claim within 24 hours as well as um, the Safety Elite Award for 2021, which basically is being proactive um, in trying to maintain a safe environment for our staff. Thank you. Great job. Yes. Thank you to all the administrators who follow processes. Uh, there was a, an awards dinner uh, not too long ago, which many of us were able to attend, and uh, you, along with uh, your, your great staff, from the district were recognized, and we, we thank you very much for your efforts. Uh, moving on, uh, the next item I just want to report on is uh, two Saturdays ago, uh, Ms. Gilbert Floyd and, and I attended the New Jersey School Boards Association Delegate Assembly and represented uh, the Egg Harbor Township School District. So Mrs. Gilbert Floyd, if there's anything you'd like to comment on or or say about that, feel free. No, nope, nothing at this time. Nope. Okay, very good. This past Saturday, uh, myself, Mrs. Bird, uh, as well as Mr. Ireland, uh, attended the New Jersey School Boards Association Legislative uh, Committee. Um, and I'm going to ask if Mrs. Bird will give us a, uh, an update uh, on that committee's activities. Sure, thank you. Um, on Saturday, December 11th, Mr. Castellano, Mr. Ireland, and myself participated in the NJSBA Legislative Committee meeting. Since the last meeting in September, new legislation has been signed into law by the governor. First, mental health screenings will be mandated, overseen by the Department of Education, and funded through a grant program. Second, for grades 7 through 12, school issued student identification cards shall printed on the back the telephone number for the New Jersey Suicide Prevention Hotline. Hope line, excuse me, and contact information for a crisis text line. These changes will be required for the 2022-2023 school year. Third, to address the statewide school nurse shortage, law is now in place to permit, to permit retired school nurses to return to work for up to two years without re-enrollment in the teacher pension and annuity fund. Third, limited teacher certification pilot directs the New Jersey Department of Education to establish a five-year pilot program for the issuance of limited certificate of eligibility with advanced standings and limited certificate of eligibility. Such um, districts must demonstrate a sufficient capability to support these new teachers and they must also demonstrate a demographic disparity between the districts or school student population and teaching staff or a shortage of bilingual education teachers or a critical need to fill teacher vacancies or hardship caused by teacher vacancies, also showing that hiring a teacher with limited certification would fill a need. Recent legislation that has been provisionally vetoed by the governor are as follows. Um, S2160-A5701, which seeks to establish a separate special education unit within the Office of Administrative Law. While the need for a separate unit is there, the governor conditionally vetoed the bill as it stands because there isn't enough personnel to comply with its, with its current language. He asked that the legislature take it back and uh, reorganize the bill so that there is a better foundation to hire more judges so that they can open up that unit. Uh, finally, bills currently advancing through the legislature, pilot form S2546, this bill requires cost-benefit analysis for long-term tax exemption, it requires Department of Community Affairs to create a database of these pilot exemptions, it requires new distribution of annual service charges, it requires five-year tax exemption and abatement agreements to be filed with county officials. The bill originally would have required the sharing of payments in lieu of taxes to be proportionally shared with school districts and others, 
but this clause was removed prior to leaving committee and advancing to the Senate floor. NJSBA will continue to advocate for this clause to be returned to the bill and will be something that the future board should consider advocating for as well. Board of Ed student reps, representatives S1219 and A3392 will require student representatives be appointed to each board of education that includes grades nine through 12. I noted this in the report because in a district as large as ours, having a board rep from these grades, even if the law isn't enacted yet, may offer the board a greater opportunity to engage with our student body. So it might be something to consider for the future board. And this concludes my legislative committee report. I do want to say it was such an honor participating in this committee and I'm thankful to the board for allowing me to do so in the past two years. So thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Bird. And uh, now I'll turn it over to Mr. Del Barca to tell us what's going on with the Atlantic County School Boards Association. Thank you, Mr. Castellano. Uh, the Atlantic County School Boards Association met last Thursday, December 9th, both in person and virtually. We had about 50 attendees totally, which was really outstanding. We're very happy to see that. Um, our guest speaker that evening was Mr. Tim Kreishner, who is the coordinator for Atlantic County Shared Services. And his topic was regionalization and shared services. And he gave us some information about that happening here in the county and uh, also about some state grants possibilities to further develop the idea of reorganizing some of the school districts here in Atlanta County. Also, we received information from our state immediate past president of New Jersey School Boards Association, Mr. Mike McClure. He was discussing available programs from school boards, uh, different trainings, and he reminded all of us that the, re the recent workshop is still available till December 28th. So you can still go online, click on the workshop, and attend any of the programs that were offered back uh, in October. The John Burns, the uh, current legislative representative for under government relations for school boards presented a report. And I think Mrs. Bird did a better job than it tonight than he did at our meeting last week. But and thank you, Mrs. Bird, for that. But he did fine. He went through many of the same things, but not all of them. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Castellano and Mrs. Gilbert Floyd for attending the delegate assembly. We appreciate that. At our uh, meeting, we also recognize uh, different members of the boards of education around the county. For our particular board, we recognize Mrs. Barbara Salaghi for her 15 years of service on the board. Uh, we recognize myself for 10 years. They recognize certified board member Mrs. Marie Sullivan for her service and her achievement. And our next meeting is uh, February 10th, and it will be a total virtual meeting on February 10th. School Boards Association determined a year ago that any meetings during the winter months of January and February would be virtual. So we, our meeting will be virtual on February 10th. The meet, that meeting after those in March and May will be a hybrid as we have done the past two meetings. And thank you very much for the opportunity to present. Thank you, Mr. Del Barca. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, move it into public comment, uh, public comment period. Uh, anyone who'd like to come forward uh, First, we'll go with anyone who's here, and then we would go to the phones if there's anyone there. Um, board comment is limited to three minutes. Um, just uh, as a reminder, we, we, we're unable to discuss personnel or litigation, and uh, it may be that you have a, a complicated question, uh, and someone might have to get back to you with an answer um, at a future time. So anyone here, questions or comments, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. Hello, I'm uh, Salvatore Giambrone. So you can just hit the mic. Right, right. On the base, yep. Hey. It says push. Hey, you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Salvatore Giambrone. I reside in A. Carver Township. Uh, a little background about myself. I am a uh, loving and grateful husband, a fun yet stern father, and a 23-year-old, uh, a 23 executive chef veteran. 
I have deep concerns for the future of my children and our educational journey. In the Jambrone House, we believe everyone has the right to a belief system, but what if we were lied to? My concern starts with the CNN news stories that my daughter tells me that she's forced to listen to during school. We believe they tell lies propagated by, to push an agenda, and that agenda is not to tell the truth. I've dived deeper into my next subject. If we were to completely shut off the news and media outlets, what would happen? Would we continue to wear masks? I know we're all waiting for that liberating moment to be told to take them off a lace cloth offering protection from a microscopic particulate. I receive an email almost every week telling me how someone has tested positive. Why? Why are you telling me this? Do you have to run to some type of legality? I thought masks work. Please look up herd immunity. It is not what you think it is. Clean filtered air, lack of touching one's face, the importance of facial expressions to show actual emotion to me is needed for optimal health and education. Fear will only make this worse. I honor your sacrifice, but this is an unnecessary fight. <clears throat> when the bad outweighs the good when it comes to mask wearing. But there's the question, why are we doing this? Is it really for safety or is it because you're told to by a higher authority? Well, how would you remedy that problem? Would you choose to do what's right over a paycheck? Would you call them for their bluff? I pray it does not happen, but I believe I know what comes next for my children. Forced injection from, uh, injection from a, subject, uh, uh, a substance I do not trust. mRNA gene therapy treatment. VAERS database shows that it is not safe. Large majority of hospitalized vaccinated individuals shows that it is not effective, nor is it even liberating to the ones that have received the multiple treatments. Still wearing a mask, still can't transmit, still can't receive. I'm almost done. Sorry, if that's okay. You're fine. Thank you so much. Uh, it, uh, it, does, it does perform waning immunity and just to lessen the symptoms, or is it just to get packed to some type of normalcy? Why does most choose an aliopathic over a naturopathic? From my research, the vaccinated are the cause of every variant we are now seeing because there are now a manufacturer of spike proteins hailed from their specific body type. Early treatment saves lives. Protocols of thousands of doctors, even including the mRNA treatment inventor, Robert Dr. Malone, have all been silenced by new media outlets that have been allowed to play in schools. These doctors have been a part of every decision-making protocol, but now when it comes to this treatment, they are not even invited to the table. Why? Why are there only the pharmaceutical companies? You are teachers and great influencers, but please don't forget to be a student. So go, learn, step outside a busy lifestyle and read true data. I end this with please get rid of uh, the opinionated news sources, make a mask optional, and respect the decision <clears throat> of, um, respect my decision not to trust an mRNA gene, mRNA gene therapy treatment. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else here that wishes to speak? Seeing none, we will go to the phones. You are now live streaming. If you can please repeat your name and address. Hi, it's Gregory Matusin. The address is 10 Hideaway Lane in Egg Harbor Township. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, the superintendent and the assistant superintendent, uh, the school board president, and the rest of the school board. Um, I am the, I, I guess I've come to the last two meetings. My daughters are homeschooled, um, and you all uh, voted to approve to amend the policy tonight to allow uh, middle school students in seven and eighth grade to play uh, sports. And so from uh, the bottom of our hearts, we're very, very grateful for um, for listening and for your swift amendment and approval of those that will allow my daughter to uh, to play softball in the spring for uh, for her middle school. So uh, thank you all very very much. We're very very grateful, and I have a, a very happy 13 year old here in the house tonight. So thank you. We're glad to hear it. Thank you, thank you very much. Do we have any other callers? Not yet, Mr. Castellano, but we have not shown the phone it's number. It's up now. The phone number is up now, so we'll give it a minute or two. Gotcha. Thank you.
Okay, that seems to be it for our public comment. Um, I'll then ask board members, are there any board members that have comments? Mr. Uh, I saw Ms. Alabarda and then Mr. Della Barca. I just wanted to say I had the pleasure of going to both Matilda Jr. at Fernwood and Legally Blonde at the high school, and it's so great to see the arts alive. Um, these, these kids, you know, they need their outlets. You know, we all know that academics are important. You know, that, that's the bread, but having the, the fun activities and getting to express themselves, it was just a joy to see, and just seeing how much work these kids put into their roles and putting together as teamwork, you know, it, it doesn't only help them right now, but think about it, it helps them in their future working as a team, going to employment, learning to work with others. So it was just great to see. Thank you, yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree with that 100%. And Mr. Gunther's here, I was able to uh, get out to see Legally Blonde at the high school, just outstanding. Great job, great job. Please extend to, to everyone involved our congratulations and thanks. Mr. Della Barca. I'm gonna join in the chorus. I also had the opportunity to see Illegally Blonde and I want to say how extremely well directed the program was. The choreography was outstanding. The uh, production and the music was really beautiful to hear. Uh, I was so impressed with the enthusiasm of the students and the, how much they enjoyed their participation in the program. Actually, the quality of the talent was outstanding also, I felt, including the boys, because over the years sometimes they're not quite as good as some of the ladies, but they were really very good. And uh, Matt, you did a great job. We were so very proud of you in the production, and uh, it was really something great to see. Um, just another comment. Today is a sad day in, in America because it's the ninth anniversary of Newtown, Connecticut and the Sandy Hook Elementary School uh, where 20 children were killed and six adults were also murdered. And I just thought it, uh, it's such an opportunity to remember some of the concerns we have regarding safety and around school districts and what a sad thing we all lived through. And then we just had another recent experience also in the country. So uh, we always have to be on guard, have our, our attention out there. Uh, as the statement about being aware of everything and saying something is so important. And I just wanted to remember that this evening because it's quite, quite a sad comment when you see those little, the young, such young children uh, taken away from all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Delbark. I, I agree with those sentiments. You know, I came on the board uh, in 2001, just mm -hmm. shortly after Columbine and uh, yeah, th that, that event stuck with me and um, really made an impact on uh, my view of the role of a board member and what we need to do to keep everyone safe. Any other, uh, Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? I just wanted to say that tonight was a, um, a great night. It was great to see a, a full house um, for um, a celebration. <laughs> and um, when I looked at some of the teachers in um, ESYs, um, education, educational um, professionals who were um, honored tonight, I looked, I was able to say, you know what, I remember that particular teacher. Um, there were quite a few teachers who my children had as educators. Um, and I just want to say that it's, it's, it's wonderful to see the teachers honored and to know firsthand, like to say that, you know what, I'm not just saying, oh, you're just clapping, but I know that teacher really, when the principal spoke of their teachers, that they really are true to what they said. And I have had firsthand experience um, working with quite a few of the teachers and then like I said, having them actually work with my own children. So I just wanted to say kudos to, um, to all of them. And I think the funniest one was um, when I saw Mr. Spangler. <laughs> Mr. Spangler's daughter getting the Teacher of the Year Award, because I, I, every time I see Mrs. Spangler, Mrs. Spangler, her father, um, was my seventh grade math teacher. And, and, and Mrs. Alabarda. And um, 
believe it or not, you know, he did one year I was in seventh grade, and believe it or not, I was talking in the back of the classroom to a friend. I mean, I know it's hard for you all to believe that. And he told me, shut up and learn. And I never, and I never forget it. I, I didn't tell my mom because I was talking, but... And I said it to him tonight, and he said, it worked, didn't it? I said, yes, it did. I said, so thank you for telling me to shut up and learn. But it was just wonderful to see the, the educators honored, and it was really, it was a breath of fresh air to have tonight. So just wanted to say thank you to all the educators. And I'm sorry I did not get a chance to get out to see the play, but I heard great reviews about it. Mr. Uh, Any other board members? I'll just comment. Mr. Um, Price. I just wanted to comment like Ms. Gilbert Floyd did. I mean, it was a great event tonight to um, honor the teachers and the professionals and well, very well attended. It was, a, it was a pleasure to see everybody here tonight um, coming out of the COVIDs and kind of coming back together again in person. So I just wanted to mention that as well. So thank you. Okay. Uh, Do you want to say something? Anyone on? Anyone online? No? Okay. And uh, so board members, we're, we're through there. Anything administration? Anything else? Everyone good? All right. Well, I think we can seek that motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. By acclamation, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. We will see you next Tuesday at this time for our final meeting uh, of the year. And we are adjourned.